we're going to get uh, get started with compiling programs. So on my, my computers and on the computers that you have in the lab, a compiler is already installed. Um, you could actually run the commands to compile code from the command line, though I won't expect you to, to, to do so. Um, so what I'm going to do today is uh, or at least over the next couple of minutes is two things. Number one, show you how you can compile using um, code from a command line. And then after that, I'll show you where you can find and then compile code using um, our um, IDE, Integrated Development Environment, called Code Blocks. Now, from the command line, let me make this a little bit larger so that you can see it. So if I click over here on the left, and if I go to properties for this, I will take maybe the font to um, another true type font, a, a true type type of font that where I can modify this the way that I'd like. So let's make it a little bit larger. We'll make them bold. And for now, I'll go ahead and um, make the screen text green. And there we have it. So if I want to compile a program, there is a compiler called GCC. And if I hit that, it says, well, I've tried to run, but you don't, you didn't give me anything to run. No input files were passed to GCC from the command line. So when I say from the command line, it means that essentially that I've hit kind of the Windows key, the bottom left of your keyboard, and then um, if I just start typing CMD, you'll see the command prompt comes up. And when that command prompt comes up, I can, um, I can operate from this command line environment. So in fact, you really don't need any of the icons that, uh, that you've learned to be associated with the Windows environment. You can just do everything here, such as see what's in your directory, DIR, clear the screen, CLS, um, you could do a number of things right here from the command line. Um, but for now, let's just try to compile a very quick program, um, C program. So let's go ahead and create a program using Notepad. And I'll say, let's call this program foo.c. And you'll see that, do you want to create a new file is what we're prompted with. And I will say yes. And you see that the name of this um, text file essentially is all it is, um, comes up here. So what I'll do is I'll very quickly um, create a simple C program. I'll include the header file. Um, and then after that, I'll say it is a program that will return an integer and it will receive no arguments. And then what I'll do is go ahead and print F, format it print, and I'll say print hello. And um, what I'll say is return zero. And we'll get into more of the details of this basic program um, in another video. So this is similar to Java's import, where you make certain library functions available to you. So we've done the pound include to um, make sure we have access to input and output. So standard input and output is the, uh, the header file that we've brought in, the library that we've brought in. Um, printf resides in there, and now that's our simple program. So if I go back over to my command prompt, and if I say um, dir directory, a bunch of files will come up. So if I say directory and just f with a wildcard, I'll say fo. Only those files that begin with fo will show up. So there's a foo.java and there's a foo.c. Foo is a common kind of, I don't want to think about it, the name of a program 
and I and so I'll just use foo. So I often use that for variables and programs when I just don't want to when I just want to throw something together rather rather quickly. So let's compile it. So gcc foo dot c looks like it's working, working, and it's done. Now, um, if I want to do a directory and order things based on the date in which they were created, order by date, so there's a slash od, what you'll see <coughs> is that um, the foo.c was created at 241, and then there's another file here, a.exe, that was created at 242. This is an executable file, and the default name of our executables, um, if you don't give them a name, will just simply be A. All right, so let me clear the screen, CLS, and let's run that executable, and it prints out hello. So that is the program that we've created. We've run it, um, and if I just simply typed in an A, it would run it um, because it... Um, assumes that it's an executable and and tries to um, to run it as such. If you are programming in a Mac or a Linux environment, you would have to do something like this. You would say dot slash. So this in this directory, run a program, the default program a dot out, and that would run it. That's in a Linux or Mac um, in uh, command line environment. So there we have it. Um, we can run a program um, from the command line, or at least we can run the compiler from the command line. This compiler happens to be GCC. If I want to go back in the history, if I hit the arrow key and go up a few, I can go and recall the program, um, uh, the command lines that were run. Um, now, notice that this compiles it, but what if I really wanted to name it something else? So I'll say, give me an output by saying dash O. And uh, let's call the program hello. Now, when I compile it, um, I will have created a file called hello.exe. So just to look at it and to keep it ordered by date, Let's look at it, and at the bottom, you're going to see a hello.exe. Um, almost, well, it looks like it's the exact same size as a.exe. Um, 46,728 bytes, 46,728 bytes. Let's clear the screen, run hello, and there it is. So we can certainly compile a program and run it from the command line. Now, if you want to explore running um, programs from the command line, if you run GCC and you pass it um, at the command prompt dash dash help, what you're going to see will be a list of other options that you can pass into the program as you're running it. So I could say certainly GCC and then the, the program I wish to compile. Um, but then there are a number of things that I can do. I can look at which version of the compiler is currently running. Um, I can have it issue warnings. Um, let's see, when it compiles, I don't, mm, let's see, what else can we do? Um, there are other options here that are shortened versions of some of the ones that are, are stated above. So if you wish to explore that, um, you could certainly get online and Google GCC and look at the manual and you'll see what some of the options are, though we won't be doing much um, with using GCC directly. Um, but that is the compiler itself. If you wanted to do more exploration with um, this command prompt, uh, let me clear the screen, dir, 
that was one operation the D, uh, the dir and the cls was another if you want to see some of the other things that you can do from the command line just type help you can do things like change directory copy files format a disk um, you could um, look at the current time. You could change your prompt um, to a simple greater than sign. Or you could change it to the standard prompt along with a greater than sign. There's just a number of things that you can do um, that you might at some point find helpful. But I won't get into that right now.